just in. Police officials are baffled from the sudden shock of dead people stalking the living. These ghouls, as we now call them, are extremely dangerous. If you are confronted by one, be alert, be careful, and stay away. The ghouls carry a contagious virus that even if by a simple scratch or pat on the back, you can contract this virus and become what we now call a ghoul. John, is that you, man? What the heck? John, man. Yo, what's so good? What's up, John? I'm John, man. I'm John, man. I'm just kidding. John, man, that up. No, John. No, no. before it's too late.
Friday Night Frights. I am your ghoulish host, Sir Orville Rodman, and welcome to my home, where every night is Halloween. <laughs> Before we go on to our journey tonight, I'd like to introduce you to some of my friends here in my beautiful home. This here is Mr. Skull. Could you say hello tonight, Mr. Skull? Yes, you did, Mr. Skull. Would you say hello to all our friends out in TV land today? <coughs> you already said boo. Do you have anything else to say, silly boy? <coughs> oh, you crazy skull. You're so bad. But anyway, folks, tonight's feature is Night of the Ghouls. It's one of my favorites, and I'm sure you will like it yourself. <laughs> Imagine, if you will, Raleigh, city of North Carolina, a peaceful town, until one day, a strange meteor lands and soon has the whole town running for their lives. Watch now, the story unfolds as a group of close friends fight to survive the longest night ever. The Night of the Ghouls. A strange meteor has landed in the vast dark forest of Timberlake, located in the northeast region of Raleigh, North Carolina. State officials and scientists are aware of the matter, and are currently searching for the crater. It seems, though, that the ones that go near the location of the meteor do not ever come back. At least, not alive. But our story tonight focuses only on a group of people who unwillingly fall prey to total terror that is created by the strange green crater. So now we'll start at the beginning. It was Tom, John, and Shannon who first heard about the sighting through the radio broadcast. We interrupt this program to bring you this important announcement. Police officials have discovered a large green meteor that has landed in the forest of Timberlake. Please do not repeat. Do not approach the crater. It is declared dangerous and corrosive. Stay away from the area for your own safety. Their friend Eric met up with the gang at the convenience store. What are you guys doing, man? What are you guys doing? Haven't you been listening to the radio, man? Oh, numb nuts over here turned it off. Jeez, man, it's like some kind of virus or plague going around. I, I just ran into my old high school teacher, Mrs. Ricky. 
eight-year-old dead cat, man. I'm getting on a dusty trail again. I didn't know. Hey guys, what are you gonna do? I've got a great idea. I say we get some shotguns to prepare ourselves a long time. All right, let's do it. Let's go back to the others at the house. Susie and Timmy, two of the friends of the gang, were out enjoying sun in the woods when even their afternoon was ruined by the static frequency they received through their radio. You know, something's up with this radio. I can't seem to tune it in. Getting up the static. Maybe check the battery? I put fresh ones in just the other day. I'm trying to pick up a news report on that meteor that hit Raleigh. Oh yeah, really? I'd be curious to see what's going on with that. Yeah. It's awful quiet around here. It is. I can't seem to get anything out of this. Huh. Oh well. I guess I'll hear about it later. Yeah, if it was anything important, we'd hear about it. Yeah. Well, what you got going on now? Well, I'm supposed to go over and see uh, Laura and Chris, see how she's doing, you know, since she's having that baby and all. So, I probably ought to get going since it's kind of clouding over now. No, we're not getting much sun, are we? Nah, well, it's getting kind of late. Well, you want to lift? You can ride. Oh, uh, actually, I've got some clothes here, and so I thought I'd just walk on over. I need to exercise anyway. Okay, that's cool. All right? All right, All right I'll see you later, All babe. Right. Take care. Bye. Tim Nico was never seen again after that afternoon. His strange disappearance only became the first. Chris was home at the gang's house, but was still unsure of the danger. Guys, what's going on? I'll explain everything to you later. Come on, let's go. Look, my friend's got shotguns and revolvers. Everything and anything we need. It's just five miles down the road. All right, let's go. Hey, Chris, y'all stay here. We'll be right back. Chris were waiting for Tom and John to return. Where is he? It's been over an hour now. What is going on? I never heard of such a thing before. Here they are. About time. It's only been about an hour. Come on, come on. Let's get in the house. Let's get in the house right now. Where's John? He's dead. Let's get in the house. Come on. just in. Police officials are baffled from the sudden shock of dead people stalking the living. These ghouls, as we now call them, are extremely dangerous. If you are confronted by one, be alert, be careful, and stay away. The ghouls carry a contagious virus that even if by a simple scratch or pat on the back, you can contract this virus and become what we now call a ghoul. Oh, 
Elsewhere, Eric decided that if he locked himself up in his house, get high, listen to rock and roll, that he would be safe to the stage or passes by. He was wrong. this month. Too much money for this shit. I can't believe this. Alright, let's see what the... Oh, the lines come with that shit. Man, I don't understand. John, is that you, man? What the heck? John, man. Yo, look so good. What's up, John? Oh, John, man. I'm just kidding. John, make that up. No, John. No! No! Oh! Hey, what the hell? Hey, what the hell? Hey, what the Darkness came quickly that day. Radiation was everywhere. Susie didn't even have a chance on a terror that lies before her. Station 6. Emergency stations are still being attacked by the ghouls, making emergency care hard to come by. Volley's capital is still one of the only remaining forces still in full strength. If you are a resident of the city of Raleigh, please seek shelter. Try the city capital for full protection. Chris contacted his old friend Chris Bree and Laura, who live nearby and try to band everyone together for safety measures. Crispy, good, you're home. Look, I don't know what's going on outside, but I'm trying my best to get everyone over to my house. Since there's a few, only a few of us in the stick of the woods, I figure it'd be a lot safer if we all stay together. Now, I was talking to Timmy a couple hours ago, and he said something to the effect that Susie was going to go visit him, and then she was going to go over to your house. So why don't you try and catch up with her and get over here as soon as you can? Okay, all right. We'll go look for it, and I'll give you a call. All right, bye. Come on. Susie's the only way over here. She's out of the car. Oh my god. We'll have to get her. Alright, we'll uh, go get her and go to Christmas. Okay. It's not the car. What? What? That's Susie right there. Where? Right there. She's straight in front of us. I don't see anything. with trees. She's right there. Don't you see her? She's to the left of that tree right there. You got it. for her life and for the safety of her unborn child. 
she was to become one of the very few survivors. Shannon was eaten. Chris managed to escape for the moment. <laughs> Meanwhile, two dark and NC State students were taking a shortcut through the woods from a bar, or a shortcut that ended into a dead end for both. Suddenly, a brave but half-crazed NC State student was seen running in the evil forest. Chris accidentally runs into him and luckily recognizes him. It's an old friend.
meteor blew up and it burned itself to ash and with it the source of strange radiation that gave life to the ghouls for without its power the ghouls dropped to the earth and lay dead forever Chris DJ was the last one alive to see the end of the nightmare as well as the end of all his friends. May we forgive them and release their tormented souls to the heavens to be forgiven and let their souls live again. Let us pray. Our Father, let these demon children escape from this earth and live again. May they be free from the torment, from Raleigh, from the evil that is released in the city. Let it be gone. Let it be forever vanquished in your kingdom, Father. In your name, Amen.
welcome back to another episode of the Friday Night Fights. I'm your host, of all the Rodney, and uh, we're just sitting here with uh, me and Skinny Timmy and my good friend Irving. We're jamming on the keys tonight. Oh, yeah. You having fun, Skinny Timmy? Oh, yeah. Skinny Timmy just came out of his crib. We're having a good old time. Oh, yeah. Crank it up, Irving. I like your little off key. Hey, I'll tell you what. is entitled Children of the Ghouls. It's a scary tale I'm sure you'll find very nice. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll be jamming here with Irving while you watch the show, so we'll see you later. Say bye bye, Skinny TV. Bye
month. These things keep popping up out of everywhere. When will it end? I don't know. Maybe the answer lies in those contaminated graves down the Blackstone Cemetery. Regardless, we need to stop them. But what if they stop us first? We should check out the perimeter first before we go. We'll make sure everything's okay. That's a good idea. Okay, let's go. Okay, name once. I want my virginity back! Okay, let's talk about a rational discussion. We don't just buy your virginity at Walmart. You and I kind of casually spent that here in the Yukon like two months ago. Yeah, but it didn't but, really seem like I lost my virginity in the first place. Then what did it seem like? It was like this. <laughs> well, you sure were loud, weren't you? I was faking it, dude. I've been taught many, many times how to fake it. By who? Was that online? Because you... Look, I don't want to drive here either, but he's a weirdo and he wants us to be here. Now, let's just go through this, but then this day will be over, won't it? But seriously, Maybe. you really need to work on that sex thing. I mean, you just don't know how to take care of it. It just doesn't get the job done. Maybe we should get one of those porno movies. You think? You think so?
I'm Bill Holding. This is my partner Joe. We live in, we live in the cottage across town. We came here to, to uh, investigate the wreckage. Yeah, they blew up all these pieces. They splewed out this radiation and, and revived all the dead people in the cemetery. It was terrible. All hell and death came, broke out in this town. And oh my God. And then this young guy, he, this boy, he blew up the meteor and blew it to pieces. But there's a few pieces left and it revived a few sticks or two. That's why we're still here. We want to get rid of everybody. I'm sorry to hear from what, what happened to your friend. I really am, I'm sorry. They killed my friends and my family. I want to kill those bastards. We need to go, I just need let's, to get home. Take me home. Let's go. Hold this, stay here. I want to talk to my partner Joe, okay? All right, you be safe here? Okay, you're not scared anymore? Okay, all right. Joe!
to all those rock <laughs> My goodness, could it be? Matilda, dear! What the hell is going on here, Obo? Who the hell put the caskets in the driveway again? Oh, no! Are you showing those blasted, creepy comedies again to these small, little, tormented children? They love our tormented little horror movies. Ah! Why are you putting on a show for these brats? They're so much better when you're in a stew. Yes, but they're nice right now to watch our movies. But anyway, it was nice seeing you again, Matilda. How have you been? Ah, next time I see you all, I shall turn you into a little toad. Oh, well, I hope your Friday night night rights. I hope they all howl up. Well, bye, Matilda. Ah. Careful flying your room tonight. This is gonna be cloudy. <laughs> well, enjoy your movie. <laughs> Happy Halloween. <laughs> enjoy your movie. This is Aaron, and I want to tell you that family is important, and when one of my favorite uncles disappears, it alarms me, and all I want to do is go find him. So with the help of my friend Woody and his wheels, we were off to the town of Greystone, North Carolina. They say a strange plague hit the neighboring town Blackstone years back, and left the town deserted. I feared for my uncle back then, but he assured me that everything was okay. With no reply in years, I pray we find him. The driving lasted over a day, and we knew how to get close to Greystone, but didn't know exactly where it was, so we stopped for directions in the nearby town. Hey, welcome to Grave Town, man. What can I do for you? Yes, sir. Go along left? Yeah, you got it. You ever been here before? Nice no? You, sir. Yes. Sir, you tell me how to get to the Greystone Village. Just take a fucking left right here, go up two lights, take a left, you're all set. Oh, good. Go to Greystone, you're gone. This curse, it's abandoned, and good luck to you, my friend. Well, that's all good and well. There's a legend, there's a legend, you know? There's a legend. I, I went there 10 years ago, and I didn't come back the same, I'll tell you that. I went there, I, I was this guy, man. Weird, man. Just... Fuck that. Don't go there. You do not go there. Well, this sounds kind of... Well, sounds pretty weird, but I gotta find my uncle regardless. Just go. Trust me. Just go. That okay. way. Okay. Well, right Get over that, that way, here right? And just go. You said right over that way, right? Right this down way. there. Okay. All right. Appreciate I'll the advice. Loop -loop. All right. Okay. Thanks for the good word, though, man. Right. Oh, really? Think so? No, we can't go back. We gotta go. We gotta do this. My uncle must be found. Found and sound. He's a bit of a jerk, but I like him anyway. The gas attendant was very serious, and it gave us a chill down our spine. But I am determined to find him. As we entered the town of Greystone, we both got goosebumps. The town seemed lifeless, empty, abandoned, completely deserted. I felt we were in a Friday Night Fright episode. Something weird is going on around here. As we got near my uncle's place, the car started to overheat. Oh, 
Oh, great. This is exactly what we need. What are we going to do from here? Yeah, it is fucking bullshit. Yeah. Check the engine. Yeah, let's get out. Looks like it overheated. Before it's too late. I need to find my uncle. I need an address. I need a directory to be able to find him. It's my old uncle Hanley. He used to live right around here. I'm sorry. I believe he might too have been a victim of the plague. We haven't seen him in a long time. Do you have an address or something? Anything? I remember the very last house on Mulberry Street on the left. I warn you, do not go near the house. Stay away from your uncle's house. It is bad. Terrible things will happen. I'm sorry, what? Heed my warning, young man. Leave this place. Do not go there. You're all gonna die. Leave this place before it's too late. You're all gonna die. Hey, come back. Wait. I told my friend Woody, the preacher, warned me not to go near my uncle's house because he believed it was cursed. He is probably paranoid because he's been living all alone up here. So we took his directions, Mulberry Street, and continued on with our quest. looks like it's been deserted for a hundred years. So what is it that we're looking for? We're looking for a journal or uh, some kind of log of uh, what happened to my uncle, what might have happened to him. Well, it wasn't exactly Mr. Clean. Let's uh, search around a little bit and see if we can find something. and fear, so they must be punished. They will not leave this town, ever. Time has come again. The 
terror that was once released shall walk the night again. Our secret must not be revealed. Now, the children are waiting. Dear Lord, forgive me, but the spirit of the evil ones engulfs me in this moment of despair. I have sworn to follow you, but the demons came to me and show me the true power. <laughs> Their ability to rise from their graves and bring terror to the earth. I hold the key to bring them to life, and now, my children, it is time for you to rise and destroy the trespassers. <laughs> children rise from the tombs yes Basically, it says here that a, a meteor hit and that the dead are coming back to life. What? Zombies. No way. Yeah, dude, this is why we have zombies. Well, this is sick. It's creeping me out. I think we get the heck out of here. Well, all right, let me hold on to this so I want to finish right. reading this, all right? Fucking zombies, man. My fucking uncle was right. Fucking kill their ass.
No! Taking over this place, you gotta get out of here. I'm looking for my uncle. I got his diary. Who's out. that? Well, Bill Henley. Yeah, and he lives right over there. Oh, hold on, man. I gotta so talk. I came down here looking for him. So. I gotta talk to you about something. We gotta go this way. Follow yeah. me, follow me, follow me. Okay. The man who just saved my life, Tim, took me for a walk and told me what became of my uncle and why he did not reply to me. After many months of rooting out the undead from this town, my uncle fell victim to it one night, and he took his own life, as well as half an army of the undead with him. As much as I did not want to hear that, I still feel a big burden lifted off my chest. Oh, how I was grateful to find that preacher for directions. Yeah, if it hadn't been for that priest, I don't know, uh, know what? if I could have found him. What priest? Great Scott! Oh, he lives, I found him over there, over that way. Now he's a madman, we gotta go get him! Let's really? go! Really? Madman? The Mad Preacher, as Tim calls him, is a menace to this town and the world. How I did not even suspect this man to use the meteor pieces that carry the strange radiation that brings the dead to life. He must be mad. He must be stopped. So I thought you were gone. You have no idea what is going on. Don't you understand? My children are invincible. Even you cannot stop them. <laughs> You're a fool, Pritch Man. You think you can get away with this? Look at her coming at you right now. What are you talking about? Over there. No, no. You cannot. I gave you life. I made you. Priest is coming for you! I made you! No! No!
this over with, you think? I sure hope it is. Uh, 